care of it. Hey everybody, welcome back. We're going to pick up right where we left off. We had just gotten into the save room. Uh, she had picked up the flask, and we had filled it up here with this kerosene. I think you can fill up your flask three times with each of these big kerosene jugs. There are a few of them scattered around the mansion. You see here we got ours filled up. In a moment, we're about to get the lighter. This comes in handy because, as I mentioned in the last video, any zombie that you kill doesn't disappear. It lays on the floor, and later in the game, it will get back up and be something called a crimson head, which is basically like a zombie on steroids. Really fast, really powerful attacks, and a really big headache. But if you have your ca your kerosene flask and the lighter, you can burn those bodies before they get back up, and that prevents crimson heads from appearing in your game. It's something that you definitely don't want. So let's just pick this right back up. We're gonna go upstairs here. I think the end game in this video is to get the armor key, which is one of the most Im important keys in the game. Like that guy right there, when we get the kerosene, we're going to come back and pay him a visit. First, I'm going to go up here. There's zombies up here, so you got to be careful. Ah! Like that. Eat it. He's not dead. I got... See, what, if I hit the auto-aim facing away from him and she flips toward... That's what I was mentioning in the last video, how you can tell if a zombie's still alive. I didn't get a real good example to show you in the last video, but that was a good one. And now he's dead, so now when I auto-aim, she doesn't flip around. I'm gonna go this way. Sometimes there's a zombie in this hallway. Other times there's not. I, I don't know the frequency that it happens maybe it just on certain difficulty levels but I'm always paranoid in this hall want to pick up the wooden mount right here and head down this way we went around this way because you can't this actually just leads right back out to the hallway that we just left but after you go through this room but you can't get into the room through that door so you kind of have to go around this way Will you take the dog whistle? Yes, I will. A crumpled memo. Today, Sir Spencer told me to hide something where no one could find it. Well, I had this idea. I figured if I could somehow have it protected by a dangerous animal like the vicious canine that lives here, no one would be able to get near it. As far as I can tell, the mutt's always hanging around the second floor balcony on the west side of the terrace, and he ought to come running at the sound of a dog whistle. This is where you come in. The thing is, I reckon you're the only person that can get near the damn dog without risking a serious mauling, which means only you can put this collar on him. The object Sir Spencer once hidden is concealed inside. You're the only person I could trust with this. Of course, you'll get something out of it as well. Remember that certain item that you've always wanted to get hold of? Well, in exchange for your services, I just might be able to get it for you. This could work out well for both of us. Signed, John Tolman. Hmm, so it looks like we'll be heading out to a balcony to make use of that dog whistle to get an item. We'll take the bullets. And this is another main thing, important thing we want to get here, the lighter. All right. Now we can go back out here and you you'll see you'll see where this this room opens up after we go through this door. We're right back out here in the hall, but when you try to go through that way, it won't let you. And now that we have the lighter and the fuel, we can start burning these bodies back up so I don't get burned. There we go. Now next time we come through here that body will be gone and he won't come back as a crimson head. I want to do this one to this guy as well because this is a save room and anytime you're you have one near a save room you want to keep them you want to keep them burned up because you're gonna be coming through here over and over again over the course of the game. You don't want one stupid zombie there harassing you every time you're trying to get into your save room. You only get two burns per kerosene fill, so we gotta come back here and fill it back up. Alright, now we're filled back up and ready to go. I'm gonna actually put my... 
reload this. I think I'm going to put my shotgun up here just for a minute. I don't think I need it just just yet, but I need some inventory spot. I'm going to keep the kerosene in the lighter. Yep, I don't want kerosene. I don't want kerosene. Okay, here we go. This way, to the left. This door, I believe, is locked. Yeah, armor key. We'll be back there soon. God, this corner always makes me nervous. Sometimes it seems there's a zombie there, and sometimes there isn't. Like I said, I can't remember which game it is. Maybe Chris's game. But when in doubt, do the auto aim trick. Hit auto aim. Okay, she didn't spin around, so there's nothing there. It's just a perfect spot for a zombie ambush. Alright, lots of herbs there. I'm probably going to give some people some heart attacks, but I'm not going to get them. I don't really need them right now. I can always come back and get them later. Show you what we have here. An unlit fireplace. Well, usually when you see something like that, it means you can light it. So let's light it with the lighter. Now what do we have? Lines carved into the relief grow, glow red in the intense heat. Well, that's where the wooden mount comes in. We're going to use that here. going to burn on there. And it becomes a map of the second floor. And yes, we will take it. I don't know how much we'll actually use the map. Because like I said, I kind of have a pretty good uh, memory about where to go in this game. But just in case, it never hurts to have it. I think this door's locked too. Helmet key. Yeah, That's one of the last keys we're going to get. So it'll be a while before we come to, to get that. Um, I guess I can go ahead and I'll go ahead and get a couple of these just in case. Although I don't really like as as you've seen, I'm sure I don't take a ton of damage because I'm kind of in a good groove with this game as far as how to avoid it. But I guess it will never hurt just to take a little bit. I'll leave that one there. If you combine, for people that may not have played it, the uh, the, the herbs obviously give you your energy back. I'm gonna go drop that off. You can combine three green herbs, three single green herbs, and that will give you a potion that will fully restore your health. Or you can combine one green herb and one red herb and achieve the same thing. So basically it kind of saves you a spot. And you can, you know, the red herb takes the place of the other two green herbs. But you can only mix a red with another herb. You can't just use a red, a red one by itself, so. That's why I left that other green one. When I mixed the one green with the red, it gave me a full potion, so I didn't need to take that one lone plant up there. Now, I don't think I need any of this other stuff. I'm gonna leave that here. This is the tricky part about this game, is trying to remember what you need to take and what you don't need to. But I don't think, I think I'm good with this. Now we're going to head back out to the lobby to the other side. We're going to go this way to get there. This hall is very creepy. Got to have my gun ready. I'm pretty. Uh, this is another locked door armor key which we're going to get eventually and come back and get that door I don't know if that door is locked but I don't want to go in there right now we're going to go there soon but not just yet unlock it from that side let's head on out Barry whoa chief Chill. slow down got any good news other than I'm still alive in this madhouse? No. Can't say it's much safer here either. We'd better secure our escape route first. There's gotta be a back door somewhere. Alright then, let's split up again. Hey, hold on a sec. Look what I've found. What? A can of fizz. It's sure to yellow and mellow those things. <laughs> okay. It's yours. Hopefully you won't have to use it. You got the acid shells, so now this is I still you're still able to get the acid rounds that 
I mentioned that he would give you earlier if you go back out to the main lobby too fast. But I always wait because I'd rather, like I said, have him help you get the shotgun, save you a few steps, and you still get the acid rounds anyway. Thanks, Barry. What about you? Oh, don't worry. I like the buddy system we have here. That gun is I ridiculous. I see. Thanks. I'll take it. See you later. Ciao. Later, bruh. And there he goes. And once again, just like earlier, we're gonna follow him. <laughs> he'll he'll be long gone by the time we get here, even though we're following him directly into this room, but This is where we're going. We also left a uh, a dead body in here from a while back. Remember the zombie that was wandering around up here? Well, I haven't forgot about him. We need to burn him up. I like to wait and make sure it's good. All right. We are we going into this door. You will get to see some crimson heads because there are some some uh, a couple occasions where you can't help but get get attacked by one. So I'm burning all these zombies, but you'll still be able to see what a crimson head's all about. Where's everybody? I know there's some zombies here. Oh, there he is. Oh, did that kill him? Yep, I think so. Let's go ahead and burn him. This is another high traffic area, so you want to keep it clean. There's another one here too. Where is he? I hear him. Can't see him. There he is. Come on, die! Oh, nice. I don't know if you guys could see. Uh, you probably heard, but I don't know if you could see it, and it's kind of hard to tell, but his head actually got blown off. You can see his, the neck stump there. If that happens, like that memo said that we picked up, that also signifies that that zombie won't come back as a crimson head, so I don't actually have to burn him. That's kind of a... The head getting popped off is kind of a random event. It doesn't happen a lot, but when it does, it's pretty awesome. And so we don't have to worry about burning that guy. There's a save room back there, right by that zombie, but we're going to go here first before we go into the save room. I always love it when they get their heads popped off. That's awesome. Wish it happened more often. Here's some kerosene. Yes, we will refill the canteen. So that's the second spot where we can... I don't need that right now. There's a second, so that's the second spot where we can refill our canteens. We'll take the battery pack. It's another defense weapon, like the dagger, if you get grabbed by a zombie, except she kind of hits them with like a stun gun. Now you see here in this case, it's a broken shotgun. We're do we don't need it, thanks to Barry, but the idea of this broken shotgun for people that may have missed, that may miss Barry in the playthrough and have to get the shotgun a different way, you have to come down here first and get this broken shotgun and take it back to that room where you find the working shotgun. And when you take the good shotgun, you got to put this broken one back on the rack because that's what triggers the ceiling from dropping down when you take the shotgun. But if you take the good shotgun and replace it with the broken one, it'll uh, deactivate the trap and you're able to walk out. So basically just having him get the shotgun saves us a bunch of steps because otherwise we wouldn't be able to get it until right now. And that would include a lot of backtracking that we don't really want to do. The idea about one of the main things about Resident Evil is not just the action. You see the zombie's gone already. But it's uh, how to... This guy's always here. Let me burn him. He's one of those bodies that are always laying around. I'm just going to get rid of him. Let me get my fill back up. But one of the, the key things about playing Resident Evil, like I was saying a moment ago is how efficient can you play the game? How, are you able to get the items that you need, take the proper steps to where you're not wasting motion, you're not wasting times, to get you know, the great playthrough times to get the, uh, the unlockables at the end of the game. So being able to get that shotgun early and not have to get it now and backtrack 
gives you a better time, which is ultimately one of the objectives when you're playing this game from a gaming standpoint, instead of just trying to experience it. Because everybody plays a game, and they have fun, they take their time, no big deal. But eventually, after you play a game for a while, you start wanting to see how well you can play it. You know, how fast can you beat it? Oh, I beat it in six hours. Next time, you want to beat it in four or something, you know. So th that's just a part of that. We're going to leave this acid round here. We do need the dog whistle. And we also need shotgun. I'm going to take that with us. Uh, let's see. I don't think I need anything else right now. All right. Let's go ahead and get this bad boy up and running. I'll show you why here in a minute. Okay, gonna head back upstairs. And get rid of those zombies here. It's so important because otherwise, every time you came, you come through here, you have a zombie on your ass. And you go out this metal door here. The, the thing about Jill's game, as you saw there, she used the lock pick to open that door. Chris doesn't have the lock pick. So you have to find small locks all over the place just to unlock those kind of doors. So it makes this game much more difficult. I'm, I'm grateful for her lock pick every time she opens a door with it. Okay, going to blow the dog whistle. You blew the dog whistle. Now you want to wait a second. Kind of hit the auto aim. There. Damn. You ran right through that. Come on, get off me, stupid mutt. Get off me. There's another one coming. Hang on. There he is. Ah, crap. He jumped right when I bent down to pick this up. Uh, ah! Get out. She stabbed him with the knife. Okay. God, I hate those dogs, man. They're rough. Okay, let's examine this collar. You guys know the drill. There's a switch. Will you press it? Yes. Hmm, what's this? A coin was hidden inside the collar. Let's examine the coin. Looks like armor. It changed into the shape of a key. It's the imitation of a key. Imitation armor key. So that's something that we need to get the real armor key. You stupid dogs. The, the good thing about this area, though, is right here, there's some herbs. And there we go. We're good as new. Now I can put the uh, shotgun. I try to save my shotgun. Probably don't need this dog whistle anymore. Discard it. Yes. I try to save, save my shotgun rounds, especially for later in the game. Eventually it'll become my main weapon, but early on I try to save as many bullets as I can. Let's see. I need to go... Oh, I'm trying to decide. Remember, I think I need to go... Back to where, yeah, I need to go back to where Kenneth is. Way back where we saw him in the beginning of the game laying down. Run across here. I love the little dust that pops up by her feet when she runs in here. I don't remember if that was in the uh, GameCube version or not. Probably was, but I like little details like that. Although I'm not sure why there would be so much dust like that on the floor of this mansion because it's abandoned right now, but I don't think it's always been abandoned. I think before the this crisis happened, it seemed like it was a heavily trafficked place. So it doesn't seem like there'd be like a foot of dust on the ground. But oh well, I guess it adds to the creepiness. A dining room, as Barry would say. This is where we pushed down that statue forever ago. You guys remember that? And there it is. And there's the gem that was in the statue. But we don't need it right now, so we're just going to leave it. And also down here, there's an emblem. We're not going to take it because we don't need it. This is another thing about playing efficiently. We can leave this here for a while because we don't need it. But eventually, we'll be coming back to get that emblem. I just wanted to show you guys just in case you guys noticed it. And we're like, hey, why didn't he pick up the emblem? Or the jewel. Now, they didn't forget about them. We're just going to leave them there until we need them. And we're going to kill this stupid zombie here. Remember this asshole? Ah, that's a bullet sponge. Can't 
tell if he's dead or not. Yep, he's dead. And we're gonna burn him. Flame on! There's Kenneth. What's up, bruh? Run through here. We passed through here early in the game. Now we're actually gonna go through here and be able to do a little bit more. This is damn crows. Remember that zombie that was laying here earlier? Yeah, he's no longer there. Wonder where we'll find him again. Gotta go up the stairs, past the crows. They won't mess with you if you don't mess with them. So if I if I try to get a cheap shot on them, I'll have crows in my hair. But if you just run past them, you'll be fine. Okay, you guys remember this area? The first time we came through here, I took a, a right there and went where that zombie saw that zombie in the mirror. I don't got, know if you guys remembered seeing that zombie there on the floor in front of us. He was there earlier too, but now I think he might have a little surprise in store for us. There he comes, Crimson Head. There we go. And that's how you gotta do it. <laughs> you gotta, I would have loved to stay there for a minute so you could see what his attack is, but I don't play around with those guys. They have a, a ranged melee attack. I think they throw up on you. They do lots of damage really fast, so always best to break out the shotgun and aim for the head. But he won't be the last one we run into. And I'm going to go ahead and take care of this goon out here. See him in the mirror again, still hanging out. Come on out. Come on. easy. He didn't have a very much, very high constitution. He's dead already. Get rid of him so I don't have to worry about him. Crimson heads make me nervous. I'm not even going to lie because they, they just, they fly up out and haul ass at you out of nowhere. Yeah, he's just, ugh. And we're, he's not the last one we're going to see either, so might as well just get myself ready. Alright, here we go. Now I know how this trap works. This puzzle, puzzle slash trap, but I'm going to show you what happens if you don't do it correctly, so at least you'll know what kind of damage I'm avoiding here. May whoever takes this emblem find peace in death. That never sounds promising. Will you take the mansion key? Yes. Uh-oh. What's this? Something's happening. See how this is playing out? Now we can't leave. Because here comes that. Now the way to get this to stop is you put the imitation key in its place. It raises the pedestal back up and the trap reverses and you're able to get out. And the spiky pointy thing goes back where the hell it came from. Now we have the armor key. Now we want to go back the way we came. We're not going to go forward. We want to go back out this way. Which will make me feel better getting away from those damn spikes. Anyway. We're going all the way back out to the main hall again. It's a little bit of a safer trip now that I've cleaned out this area. I believe the quickest way to get back out there is this way. All those mirrors in the corners makes for a, a pretty neat little hallway area there. I love the way you can see the zombie creeping in the mirrors. They probably could have done it a little more too, but it is neat. Back out here again. Now you guys can understand why I, I burned up that zombie. I don't want to, every time I come back out on that balcony, I'd have a crimson head chasing me around. And you never know where he's at when you go in there. He could be in front of you or behind you. That's just to be done with him. We're going to run straight across here to this door. You use the mansion key. Okay, let me make sure I got an inventory spot. I do. Okay. Camera angles in this area are a little wonky. Take those. Come on, there's bullets there. I know it's a table made of glass. I'm not an idiot. 
Get the bullets. Stop it. Oh my gosh. There we go. Okay. Gonna go down here. What do we have here? I think there's something. Yeah, I thought there was a I thought there was a dagger on that bench somewhere. Okay. And what's this? Forest. <laughs> Forest has given up the ghost. I guess he should have run. But he does have a really awesome grenade launcher, so we will take that. Now, my recommendation to you when you play this game is after you get the grenade launcher, just turn around and walk back out. Okay? But I'm going to keep going around this corner just to show you what happened. But I'd, I would recommend skipping this and <laughs> not taking the chance when you play your own game. But just to show you what happens, we'll go up here. Ooh, look, herbs. Oh, here comes good old Forrester. Ooh, he's really fast and he's really strong. He's about he's about the equivalent of a crimson head. Maybe actually a little bit stronger than that. He's almost like a little mini boss fight. And it doesn't yield anything. The only thing down here, I believe, is just these two green herbs. Kind of to heal yourself from having to fight him. So it's totally pointless other than to scare the crap out of you. So like I said, it might, if you play your game, just creep up there just far enough to get the grenade launcher. And then just turn around and leave. And if you want to see a short battle with Forrest, you guys could just fire up my video and save yourself, <laughs> save yourself the pain. out of here. Camera angles are strange in there. It's kind of hard for me to figure out which direction I need to go in. Now we're going to head down here. This is the hallway we came out of earlier where we found the lighter in that room at the end of this hall. This is the door I said we were going to wait to go in. Well, now it's time to go in it. Uh, it was locked anyway. I, didn't, I wasn't sure if it was locked, so we couldn't have went in it earlier anyway. It's always, but it made sense to wait anyway, so not even worth trying to go in. But now we're now we're ready. Richard, what happened? You're wounded. This whole place is a killing zone. There are monsters. What did this to you? A big snake. Snake? And it had to be poisonous. Poisonous? Richard, hold on. Bring me serum. I saw some, but didn't bring any. I'll go and get it, okay? You're gonna make it. Thanks. Alright, looks like we gotta go get some serum to save Richard. The serum is actually in the save room back on the other side of the mansion as you see there so that's where we're gonna go back across the mansion now this is a timed kind of thing so you want to try to get there and back as quick as you can the game will go on even if you take forever and get there the game will go on but the outcome will be a little bit different so my recommendation is just to know where you gotta go and just get there as quickly as you can and get back we are going to make a slight deviation once we get in that area because there's something that I need to do. I need to refill my uh, uh, kerosene canteen. But we'll be able to do that fast enough to where it won't negatively affect our mission for Richard. All right, look at this. There he comes. Take this guy out. Otherwise, he'll haunt your dreams every time you come through here. All right. Heading down. Neat little sequence. It'd be even more terrifying if that was a crimson head. To see him hauling ass and running towards you. 
gonna fill up the uh, kerosene canteen while I'm in the neighborhood because I'm gonna burn that body up there. Yes. Okay. The serum that we need for Richard is in the save room back up here around the corner. I'm gonna go in here. I'm gonna drop some things off. While we're in the neighborhood. Don't need this right now, so I'm gonna drop that off. I don't need this at the moment, so I'm gonna drop that off. Serum is here. Will you take the serum? Yes. Now we're going to head back over to Richard, and on the way, I'm going to stop and burn that body. There's a big battle coming up here pretty soon. One of the first, I guess, what you would call true boss battles in the game. Uh, people that have played this game will know what I'm talking about. You might be wondering why I didn't take more powerful weapons with me right now. Well, it's because I'll be near a save room before that, right before that. So I can just pick up the weapons then. Again, it's all about the efficiency, taking what you need only when you need it and leaving everything else behind, giving yourself plenty of inventory space to pick up other things, which we're going to need here in just a few minutes. Get our ass back over to Richard. Once again, across the balcony, into the hallway. I always call this the Richard Hall. I, I, I guess because I, that's kind of how I identify it in my mind. Okay, this is the hall, long hallway that's got the room with Richard and this, and he's gotten bit by a snake or whatever. So I always call this the Richard Hall. Earlier in the, the play, I wanted to call it that, but then I realized you guys would have no idea what I was talking about. So now I can finally start calling it the Richard Hall. Here, Richard. I'm gonna give you a shot. Hang in there. Jill. Here's my radio. Take it. Cool. Spotify. Um, uh, does it ever not hurt? Well, no, does it? Some more green herbs, but we don't need them, obviously, so we're gonna move up into the next room here. There's a zombie hiding down this hallway, so auto-aim. Start shooting. Oh, nice! His head blew up again, but again, it was off camera, so you couldn't see it, but... Perfect, I don't have to deal with him. That doesn't actually happen very often. Jill's on a lucky streak, that's two in the past few minutes. So we don't have to burn him, so good thing. Good deal. Okay, bullets. The good thing, another good thing about when their heads pop like that, you say bullets. Instead of having to use 15 bullets on one zombie, I just use like, what, three or something? Oops, I don't wanna push that yet. All right, you gotta light this candle. Cause it's too dark to see anything. You could check things in the room and all she'll say is, oh, it's too dark to see. So first thing, light that up. Over here we got some shotgun shells, which we shall never turn down. Next thing we want to do is get this out of the way. But you got to be careful though once you get this moved, because whoa, hello, ah, back off. Right, let's get out of there. Get some place where I got a little more room to move. He's still alive. Now he's dead. Now I normally, you seem as I've played through this, I normally would burn that body, but we'll never be back in this room again, so I'm not even gonna waste the kerosene. Will you take the musical score? Yes, that's the main item we needed when we came in here. Now we're done, let's head back out. There's a door up here up these stairs but it's locked so we're not we're not want to go in there right now anyway so we got to go back out towards Richard 
and back out into the Richard Hall. Let's stop and see what he's up to. How you doing, Maine? I'm okay. The others... You mean Kenneth and Forrest? They're not so okay, but... I don't want to tell him that and bring him down. Stars team's uh, kind of a bummer. Alright, let's go. Going this way. Into the green double doors. And it's kind of hard to tell, but yeah, it's kind of a dark green. You use the mansion key. This spot. I think I may need... I may need to drop something off, because I don't know if I have enough room, actually, to pick up an item. I actually, I don't think I do. So let's make a quick pit stop. I need an open spot here. I probably would have more open inventory spots if I wasn't so... Hey, what's this? I left some bullets in the room on your right. Feel free to use them if you manage to get yourself in trouble, Barry. This is always a neat kind of thing. You go in here and you find a bunch of stuff that Barry's left for you. First aid sprays, looks like some flame rounds, some bullets, all cool stuff. I'm gonna drop this off for now. And I'm gonna drop off the musical score because we don't need it quite yet. I'm gonna fill up my kerosene. There's only a little bit left. Refill. Yes. I think it may be empty now. Yep, not a single drop remains. So that one is totally empty. As I was saying, I would probably have more space in my inventory if I wasn't so diligent about carrying the fuel canteen and the lighter with me everywhere. If I only carried that from time to time, I'd have two extra spots. But I don't like the crimson heads. I don't like having to use my shotgun rounds on them, so... I'm always, I always have it with me, almost always anyway, ready to burn those damn things up whenever I see a dead zombie. Now we can go in here. This is another puzzle. It's a variation on a puzzle that was in the first Resident Evil game. What we want is back here on this wall. There's something in this depression, but the grate is in the way and you can't reach it. See, look around. We have all these suits of armor, and you saw that you noticed those four scooted out. Now, I'm going to show you what will happen if you just press the button without attempting to do the puzzle or if you do it wrong. And then we'll come back in and I'll show you the right way to do it, but just so you'll see what happens. Woe to those who disturb my sleep. There's a switch here. Will you press it? Yes. And in comes the poison gas. Gotta get the hell out of there. If you stay there too long, it'll kill you, obviously. And the grate doesn't come down, so you can't get the item. So that's what happens when you screw up the puzzle. Now I'm going to show you how to complete it. It's basically just pushing the statues back over the vents. Because the poison vents can come from behind the statues. If you put the statues in the right order back where they're supposed to be, you can press the button without the gas coming out. The order is upper right. So this guy. Lower left. Lower right. And that's it. If you put up if you push them and it has to be in that order too, because if you push them in the wrong order then one that you did push in will push itself back out and it'll start popping in and out and go all nuts. But if you do them in that order, they'll all lock it. They'll lock back in against the wall perfectly. And now we can press the button. There goes the grate. So remember, upper right, lower left, lower right. Once they're all back against the wall, press the button, and now we can get this. A mysterious box. Will you take the jewelry box? Yes. Let's do our thing and examine it. Hmm. There's a switch. Will you press the switch? Yes. Nothing happened. Okay, let's keep looking. Is that the same switch I pressed? Nope, nothing's happening. Let's go around here. There's a switch here. Press it. Yes. Nothing. 
There's a design of the sun and moon. On the plate it says, sunshine will awaken me. God, the box is crazy. Hmm, let's see. Press the switch. Sunshine. I need the two halves there, so where's the other one? Is it this one? There we go. I had to press the two shapes that were on the sunshine emblem on the top, and once I pressed those two buttons, then it opened. And there's a mask inside. Death mask. We will take it. It's a death mask without eyes, nose, or mouth. That is what we need. If you guys remember in the last video, we went we went down, we went outside, and then we were, went down in this creepy ass uh, crypt like place that had the coffin hanging from the ceiling. And there was the clue in there about the death death mask. Someone needed four masks or whatever to awaken something, so awaken evil or whatever. Well, that's one of the masks. So we finally have it. There are three more. So let's head back down here to the save room. I'm gonna put, we don't need the mask right now. I mean, you can't, if you want, get a little extra time, you can go down there and actually use the mask, actually get it out of your inventory, but it doesn't do you any good right now, so I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna put it up for the time being. And that's where I'm gonna bring this video to a close. Uh, I think this is a pretty good spot. I'll see you guys, you know, again soon. We'll pick up right here where we left off. As always, thank you guys for hanging out with me. If you like the videos, comment, like, subscribe, share with anybody you think may be into this kind of thing. And as always, thanks for watching.